Joining me now on Telecom TV is Martin Taylor, who is CTO of Metaswitch. Martin, welcome back to Telecom TV. Nice to be here. Now, we're going to be talking about cloud native and how it relates to the telecoms industry and to CSPs. If we look at the network and if we look at what NFV set out to achieve, is, is it fair to say that the vision of, of the original vision of NFV was was somewhat limited and perhaps didn't foresee the extent to which the changes that, that we're seeing are, are now going to be required. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if if you go back and revisit the original NFV white paper that came out in what, what 2012, 2013, I think you know what what you'll see there is 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 discussion of taking uh, software out of hardware appliances and essentially. Uh, virtualizing it as, as software appliances, but really no other change than that. And the, the motivation seemed to be largely around reduction of hardware cost on the basis that one could use commercial off-the-shelf uh, server hardware. And there was some, uh, there was some discussion about uh, aut automation, there was some discussion about orchestration, there was some discussion about opening up the market to other vendors. But I think um, the, 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 there was a failure to see the impact that softwareizing the network could have if one took it to the sort of logical extreme, as, as exemplified by uh, what some of the big web-scale players were doing even then. So for a, a telco to, to even consider the, the move to cloud-native methodologies and the associated technologies, how big a step and how big a change does it represent for them? Well, it, 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 it's a huge change in the sense that uh, moving from uh, a physical to a, to a virtual software appliance doesn't really change anything from an operation standpoint. Um, I mean, they, they have to operate the cloud, but the network function itself still looks kind of like it, 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 it did before. Um, and in some ways, that there's, there's a sort of feeling of comfort around that. Uh, you know, people understood what they were doing. But I think that there's also a, a huge set of limitations around that. Um, and I think that's really why uh, you know, NFV hasn't made the compelling business case that uh, people hoped it would. Uh, and when you look forward to the much more profound changes that can be accomplished if you properly cloudify network functions, then, then you see a much more uh, interesting um, kind of business case, uh, which is, a, I think, a combination of uh, really serious operational savings, uh, a reduction in the risk of, 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 of network malfunctioning, because a lot of that comes out of fat fingering configuration changes. If you automate stuff properly, that, that those problems largely go away. And then, of course, there's the whole agility question, the, the ability to very quickly roll out and adapt uh, services to meet emerging requirements. Has the advent of 5G acted as a, as a catalyst for, for cloud native thinking? It certainly has, yes. I mean, for, for a couple of reasons. I mean, one is that um, the, the very architecture of the 5G core um, is designed with cloud nativeness in mind. Now, that's not to say that if you build something that complies with the 3GPP specs, it's automatically cloud native, but at least the architecture is moving in the right direction with service-based interfaces and that kind of thing. But I think the other thing that 5G does is it opens up a whole bunch of interesting new use cases, um, you know, besides the kind of ma mass market mobile broadband. And those are opportunities for, for network operators to, 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 to earn incremental revenues, but they're gonna need to move fast and be agile. And I think you know, that's where cloud native can potentially help them. When we look at the hyperscale companies, the, 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 the massive global cloud-based service providers, digital services providers, they've really embraced cloud native. They've, they've, they've re they're really at the forefront of, of cloud native development. Why has the telecoms industry, why is it lagging? Why has there been so little progress so far? Well, of course, the web scale players wrote the book on cloud native. Um, I, I, I mean, I think that, that, that there's a whole bunch of challenges for, uh, for telcos and network operators. I mean, one is that they are not masters of their own destiny here. They are uh, very dependent on their vendors. And uh, moving to cloud native hasn't necessarily been in, in their vendors' best interests. Uh, you know, cl cloud nativeness, you know, one of the implications here is that, uh, you know, it's a pure software world where you're completely independent of the underlying infrastructure. And, you know, that, that's one of the things that telcos want to embrace. They want to be able to deploy their own cloud infrastructure or leverage public cloud infrastructure for that matter. But that, of course, removes a massive amount of value from their traditional uh, su su supply chain. Uh, and so, you know, vendors haven't necessarily been that incented to move down the cloud native journey. And the other problem, of course, is that there's, uh, you know, 
know, it, technically it's hard. It's, it's very difficult, or almost impossible to refactor existing network function software uh, to, to, to be cloud native. Um, and finally, there's the problem of um, reproducing all of the legacy features and capabilities. I mean, tel telcos are notorious for never letting any feature go. Uh, you know, one, once some capability has been deployed in the network, no matter how abstruse and obscure it might be, uh, it's, it's risky to, to, to discontinue providing that. So over time, network functions have accreted masses and masses of leg legacy functionality. And in order to uh, replicate that in the cloud native world requires a massive investment on the part of the vendors. Do, are telcos really aware that this isn't really an evolutionary step, that, that there's, there's wholesale change here, this is a bit of a, some of a discontinuity of how their, their business practice is, and it's going to be, um, I guess, highly disruptive, in, at least initially. Yes, I mean, th th they've embraced the discontinuity of themselves as, as it relates to operating a cloud infrastructure as the basis of, uh, of, of network function virtualization. But I think that, that what's lagging is the, the, uh, the delivery of the network functions from the uh, traditional vendor community. And uh, that's, that, that's really what's been holding things back, to be honest. So when we look at the network functions that are required by a, a telco, are you advocating that the, the, the best approach, or indeed the only approach, is to, is to rebuild them and build them from first principles, looking at what the cloud can provide and, and utilizing the cloud correctly? Well, when you look at the architecture of a properly uh, cloud-native network function, uh, you know, embracing all of those web scale principles of statelessness and microservices and service-based interfaces, um, and containers and Kubernetes orchestration and, and, and all that, you, you begin to see that the differences between that approach to software and the traditional appliance approach to software are so numerous and, 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 it, and so complex that it, it really is impractical to refactor existing software. And uh, I mean, we ourselves have a number of products with, with a long, um, history of, of, of evolution uh, and, and, and we recognize how hard it is to, to, to kind of make those truly cloud native. So I think it's, it's, it's clear to us that cloud nativeness starts with the first truly new generation of network functions that come into the network and I think that's, that's where 5G plays, plays a role. Um, so network operators are, are very much in the thick of or you know, have already engaged quite heavily in procurement um, processes for, for 5G network functions. And that, that continues, of course, up till now, it's mostly been the new radio in, in non-standalone mode. So that's leveraging the legacy packet core. Mm -hmm. But as they start looking at the standalone 5G packet core, the brand new stuff, then I think it really makes a lot of sense to be very um, rigorous and demanding on their vendors as to properly cloud native implementations of, 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 of that function. Is there a, a best practice or recommended route for, for a telco to fully embrace what cloud native means and makes possible? Um, well, I think it, it, it starts with understanding what cloud native really means. Uh, I think you know there's th there's a tendency to uh, to take what to, to take vendors at face value, and you know, because everyone recognises cloud native is desirable, everybody says their solutions are cloud native. Um, but I think it's important for telcos to understand uh, what cloud native really means under the covers, to be able to ask the tough questions of their vendors that give them a real sense as to well, you know, just how far down this cloud native path has this vendor gone. Um, but uh, also, I, I, I think the um, the traditional procurement process is not really fit for purpose as it relates to cloud native stuff because it tends to favor um, the ability to tick, to put a tick in the box of a huge number of legacy requirements when what, uh, what the telco should really be concerned about is, uh, you know, ha is this vendor going to take me on the cloud native journey successfully and can they, uh, can they adapt quickly and, and move fast and, uh, and, and be agile and really uh, you know, stick to those cloud native principles so that I can really get the benefits that cloud native promises me. And the traditional pr procurement process doesn't really uh, allow those kinds of uh, characteristics of vendors to, uh, to shine. So you know, we're advocating a much more um, kind of cooperative experimental, uh, you know, bring, um, bring vendors into your labs, uh, conduct trials, 
um, I mean, compare vendors on the, on the basis of, well, just how quickly could they bring their stuff up on my infrastructure? And you know, what happens when I ask them to scale quickly? What happens when I just randomly kill instances of software? Uh, you know, so what does the sort of healing thing look like? How, does, how is this thing orchestrated? You know, am I, do I get fully automated lifecycle management? Um, and and these, these are things that don't necessarily come out very easily during a, in a traditional kind of RFQ, RFI driven procurement process. Well, Martin, we're gonna be talking later about cloud native network functions, but for now, thanks very much indeed. Pleasure.